Hey, what's up? We're live. Thank you to anyone who's already here. I'm um, going to look at some of your messages because the reward goes to uh, Timothy, who says <laughs> drinking coffee. So I actually made myself some coffee here. And I am drinking it. You can see it on both angles, both in the front camera and from down here. So I want to welcome all of you aboard. Thank you so, so much for being here. I just realized we've been going very, very consistent um, on the live streams. And I'm, I'm very happy for that. It's been a few months now. Who, may, who, who knows how many uh, live streams we've had so far. And I remember doing the first one being super nervous. I am still sometimes nervous, but I really remember doing the first one and being really nervous and making sure everything's uh, in place and everything works well. Um, and it's really fun to slowly kind of grow into that habit. Um, hopefully we'll improve some things in the back end, some things you may not see, but you will definitely feel uh, in terms of the quality of the streaming and the, my own comfort while doing it. Uh, more screens would be nice something like that so we'll see about that but let's see uh th 14 now 13 concurrent viewers uh renta ivana says can't wait thank you so so much barb white i'm happy to be back been ill sorry to hear barb uh, hopefully now uh, you're getting better and feeling better i was sick a few times in the last couple of weeks it was really tough i don't know why but something about the weather is really insane it's weird and it doesn't make me feel too good we've had a few very foggy days here and that i feel that in my nose immediately uh which which is a bummer uh but now it's a little better uh mark <laughs> as always thank you so much for being here welcome back barb R glad you're better everyone's nice uh Shaspins says hi hi timothy knuffler i wonder what Ron is doing right now maybe combing his hair i was not combing my hair as you said i've been uh drinking coffee starting to drink my coffee after i got everything prepared and you can already see we have a portrait here we're gonna talk about that in just a moment don opliger waiting in kansas school uh you're no longer waiting hopefully uh you're here with us watercolor by shilipi Hi, Leron, waiting uh, for you in India. By the way, sorry for the one minute delay. You have been waiting for too long. Uh, it took me a few moments just to uh, go live. Actually, today I was ready. Finally, for the first time ever, I was ready on time. Let, let me show you my face. For the first time ever, probably, I was ready on time. My hair is a mess. It's not because I didn't comb it. It's just as I need to get a haircut. It's terrible. Uh, this haircut didn't go uh, as well as, as I wanted to. Usually, it looks better at this kind of stage after a few a month or I don't know how long uh, but in any case yeah today I actually had everything ready in time started properly uh, calculated my time fairly correctly and so everything was ready and I was just sitting here looking at stuff and I'm like I have my water I have my coffee even I have the painting here uh, down right here the drawing I have the painting hung in front of me on the wall. I have my palette. I, I filled in this thing with water finally, replaced some of the water, uh, didn't clean the palette, but we won't need to today, you'll see. So everything was kind of at its place. And I was like, should I go live? Did I, am I forgetting something? Am I ready and on time for the first time ever? Turns out, yes, I was. So that was funny. Um, of course I am, Haley Ron. Hey, my friend, how are you? Christine Bourgeois, good morning from Minnesota. I set my alarm for this. Cool. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Don Oplier, what time is it where you are? So uh, right now it's three, uh, it's five minutes past 3 p.m. here. Um, so that's the, because we moved the clock. Uh, it actually works out better for me in terms of the hours. I can start alive uh, one hour earlier. And because it's not too um, sunny today, I don't have to close that, that blind that when the light seeps in, it just blinds everything. So today I don't have to deal with that, which is nice. Um, Gelcha, good morning uh, from Philly, Liron. Uh, good morning yourself, and thank you for joining. Aria Kirkbride, hello, glad to catch another live stream. Thank you for being here, Dab. <laughs> Laura Merrifield, good morning from uh, sunny California. Okay, it will be sunny once the sun comes up. Yeah, same here, and I like that. It's, it's a nice change of pace, I don't mind that. Uh, Sandra uh, Tascarini, hi from Seneca Falls, New York. Uh, welcome, Sandra. Uh, something I cannot read, unfortunately. It looks like either Chinese or Japanese. Uh, kind of some kind of a kanji. Good morning from Taiwan. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Of course, I am. Uh, I'm good. Thanks, you. 
I'm doing well, I don't know. Maybe there are some conversations amongst the chat. Uh, Zaid Sakur, on time and present. Uh, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Thank you. It's been a few good days. I actually started eating more like cleaner after a while that I really was not. Uh, kind of going back into a keto, kind of ketogenic diet. Not too clean, but no carbs or sugars. I believe I didn't consume any, I mean, carbs in vegetables are fine, but no bread, like no bread, no pita, no, no, uh, none of that. Um, no sandwiches for me. Uh, so no bread, no sugar, and uh, no pasta, no rice, none of that. Solely getting my uh, carbs from vegetables. Uh, hopefully that'll work out. We'll see. Uh, it, it did good for for me in the past and hopefully it will now so but I've been waking up much much better um, I don't know if you remember the last video I did of critiques I woke up completely trashed I was I was really tired I was like I'm just gonna film like that and some of you may have noticed I was out uh, I was so out but it's funny uh, Lion Wall, good evening. It is 12 midnight here in Australia. Australia is always gonna be that odd uh, time time of day, Australia, Japan, like uh, I guess China too, some places always going to be a little different from mine. So my apologies for that and from the US. Uh, Ray Kirkbride uh, watching from Birmingham, UK here. Uh, by the way, some of you have seen the collaboration with Tom Shepard with uh, tips, watercolor tips. That was a really fun one to make. Uh, hopefully you've seen it. I have shared it on my story yesterday. Uh, T Broadhurst says, hi -ya. Uh, I yourself, David Smith, Huntington, uh, WV, WV, uh, what is WV, let me check, I don't know, I, I'll, I'll, I probably know and I forgot, let's see, WV, oh, West Virginia, of course, of course, West Virginia, I'm like, I tried searching for any south or, or, or north or south, and I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense, it's a, it's a W, so yeah, West Virginia, cool. Uh, Elisa Mason, I don't have to work until later uh, and I'm able to tune in uh, from the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Cool, cool. Uh, so just as a quick note, here's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to go back to read some of the messages I've missed in just a moment. We're going to paint this lovely scene, uh, uh, this lovely scene of a portrait uh, because it was a larger one. and I kind of made it smaller. So uh, it's going to be a really fun one. Very easy compared to other works. I know it looks complex. If you look at the description box below, you will see I put a link. I updated it about an hour ago. I put a link to the reference photo, so, uh, to the sketch stage, so you can actually see how I sketched this, recreate it, and paint along with me. We're going to talk for a bit, so feel free to do that, and you can even trace uh, over my own if you want to save time. Um, so it's going to be a fun one, relatively simple. I'm going to talk about a few ideas um, in a few moments that will help you to better approach this one. Uh, you'll see it in just a second. I do want to first uh, see what else you're writing in the chat. Um, and as always, uh, I see the streams a little slowing down sometimes. I may have to close some windows. Uh, it's always like that. Let me see what I can do here. I'm going to close Photoshop, which is like the most ram hog thing I have on my Mac. So maybe it will make things a little faster. Sorry about that. I don't know why. Sometimes the stream just slows down on my end as well. Uh, but in any case, let me know. You can still hear me well. I think that's that at the very least should work well. Um, so uh, Elisa, I want, or Eliza, I wanted to say that it's going to be a fairly quick process. So you may even see most of it, if not all of it. Uh, Deepak Sharma, good evening from Delhi, India. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Madeline Venter, morning from uh, Madeline in Atlanta, cool. Uh, Chris P, Chris P again, hello, how are you? Uh, Mina Fidel, hi Liron, KG, uh, K, KJ, uh, greetings from Germany, Mimi Harp, hey from Delaware, USA. Uh, VM, thank you for uh, always inspiring me to push myself, your work is truly stunning, thank you so much. Uh, Zaid Thakur, when will you do more of those critiques <laughs> and when can we give our submissions if you do? Uh, send me the submission. I, I already said I will do another one, probably not live, like another video. Uh, so send me the submissions. Maybe I'll do it live. I'm not sure yet. Um, and I will consolidate them all into one video. So definitely we can do that. Uh, Carla Bravi, Carla from Italy. Have you ever tried sleep tape at night? Um, I don't actually know what that is. Sleep tape. Sleep. 
wow, my Mac is super slow. I'm gonna have to make sure that it doesn't crash on me. I don't know why it's so slow. Oh, I don't have a battery. The battery is really empty. Okay, I'm gonna need to do something for a moment. I may disappear, so sorry about that. Um, okay, let's see here. So my apologies, my Mac has 7% battery and I'm not sure why. I do know, and sorry that I, I know I'm gone. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Go back to the FaceTime. Sorry about that. It's technical issues, it's just a part of it. Uh, here we go. Okay, I'm back here. Hopefully my Mac will now charge properly. I'll have to closely monitor it. Sometimes, I don't know why, it look, it's in charge, it's connected, but somehow it doesn't charge really and the, the, it goes way down. Sometimes it's just because I have a few things on and it slows the computer down. Uh, now it does look a little better, so hopefully uh, it works. Uh, yeah, lots of lagging. Yeah, yeah, I know it's it's annoying. Um, I'll have to see how I fix that. I don't know. What should I try? I really don't know. It, it's a new issue. It wasn't uh, wasn't going on before. Uh, turning down video settings or using faster encoding. Oh man, oh man, it's gonna be a rough one. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, what can I do? Okay, look, this live stream is gonna be, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close this window completely of the Chrome. It may be slowing everything down. Look, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, I don't know exactly what the issue is. I think I have a suspicion. Uh, it should improve now. So here's the thing. I had a window that, you know these web pages that constantly load like idiots. They keep reloading and reloading and refreshing with for no apparent reason. Like it's it's badly programmed. I had one of those open up, uh, and that was really taking up a lot of the memory. It should work better now. My apologies if it takes time. Uh, hopefully it will improve. And no, and yeah, I know I went out for a while. Yes, that was on purpose. I pulled out the camera to connect my charging uh, socket to a different one on my computer. Uh, so in any case, yes, we'll see about that. I, hopefully it will improve. Uh, it's really annoying. Okay, okay, we'll continue. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna continue reading your messages. Uh, if you can at the very least hear me well, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully upgrade the connection. I've been talking about it for a long time, but it doesn't work out for some reason. Okay, um, let's see here. Joanne Johnson. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna check out what sleep tape is. <laughs> Let me check that out. Uh, sleep tape. Sleep tape. What is that? Like actually taping the mouth shut? That's strange. So no, I had no idea it exists. I'll, I'll read about it later because I'm snoring a lot lately. <laughs> whenever my nose is, um, whenever my nose is uh, a little full uh, and blocked, I snore a lot. So yeah, I should check that out. Uh, Joanne Johnson, good afternoon, Leron, uh, one uh, and nine minutes in London. Yeah, I know you're two hours uh, behind us, it's really. Uh, it was more, I believe, in that it narrowed when we changed our uh, time to, I don't know, DST, whatever you call it, daylight saving time. Uh, John is here. Hi, Leron. Hi, John. Hope you're well. Thank you so, so much. Richard Bennett. Hello, everyone. Hello, Leron. Richard, I believe I answered your Instagram message now after ages, so my apologies uh, about that. Yes, I, that's a good idea, checking the processes in the task manager. It's just that I, I closed some stuff and it should be better. Hopefully the playback is better now. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, at least your voice doesn't freeze, carry on. Yeah, thank you so much. Sorry, it's always like I'm talking and then I'm wondering to myself, can they hear me? Uh, is it working properly? That's usually my only uh, worry. But yeah, thank you so much for your patience, everyone. Uh, so Richard, yeah, sorry for the delay. Hopefully uh, I provided you with a good uh, response. Uh, I believe you just complimented me and then I thank you. So thank you for that. Here's what you have to know about Instagram messages. Uh, when I get one, I'll, I'll always answer because uh, I get it in a message request kind of list and I always clean that list. I always answer everyone. But then once you're out of there, you're in the ocean of Instagram messages. And that's when there's almost absolutely positively zero chance that I'll see the message unless I take like a session of three, four hours to go over all messages. It's just, I have hundreds, probably thousands of messages by now. I would say probably thousands. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. I answer the first message, message always. And then if it's something important, I'll direct you to email or something like that. And if, if it's just, uh, you know, something nice, I'll, I'll re reply. But then it gets really hard to see the messages. 
so sorry about that. Um, so let's go over a couple of more and then we'll get to painting. The painting process is going to be, I think, a little faster. Uh, Marjorie Johnson, good morning. Uh, a little bit shelty, a little bit shelty. Is it a fed and ready to watch your magic? Thank you so much. Uh, Rhea Kirkbride, anyone else has uh, feed lagging? Yeah, that's my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Lagging, lagging, lagging. Uh, Elsa Grace, hello uh, from La Honda, California, USA. Uh, 6 and 11 minutes a.m. Good morning. Wow, that's early. Sandra Tascarini, did you, uh, did you do your sketch freehand? Heck no, <laughs> I traced it, I had no time. Um, I'll show you one I did freehand uh, recently that I really like. Um, it, it just takes more time and for practicality's sake, I'm demoing the painting, I just traced it. Uh, sometimes I'll do a grid, but a grid is more if there are a lot of complex elements and it's a large painting, in which case I will do a, gra uh, a grid because I really want to see the proportions of everything. Uh, Ian Jackson, I put my video down to 480p. Hopefully it will improve without that. Um, thank you so much, Elsa. Thank you for letting me know. Better. Pierce Schilling, hi from the UK. We can hear you. Thank you so, so much. Maggie says it's better now. Uh, Rhea says we're patient, so thank you. Much, much appreciated. Let's get to painting this. Um, so here's what's going to guide us in today's painting process. We have this uh, portrait. Portraits, I think, are easier in some cases than uh, landscapes or cityscapes because it's just one thing. I know there are details and all of that, but it's just one kind of an object. Um, there isn't as much concern uh, regarding composition and, and things of that nature, which is a huge plus. Yes, composition is, is present everywhere, but in the case of a portrait, it's a little more easygoing. So here's what I, a decision I made beforehand. What I'm going to do here, and this is what I like, I like removing a lot of worries uh, as a painter, uh, especially when I'm teaching a concept. So in this case, I made a decision in advance to only uh, use black and white. Okay. Now what this does is it will allow me to not think about values essentially. I'm just going to mix one value. It's going to be kind of mid value to dark. Um, or we could keep it high key and focus on, on a very loose kind of watery wash. Actually, we can do that and that'll be fun. We haven't done that in a while. Let's make this high key, but still just uh, dark and light. Okay. We're not going to have a, a kind of a values of in between kind of like that flutist tutorial uh, I did where I painted this flutist statue and all I did was light and dark and kind of playing around with warm and cool here. I'm not even going to do that. It's just going to be monochromatic black and white light and dark and that's it. That's going to be the entire process. Uh, now, what this does is it removes values and it removes color. So it leaves us more of a mental uh, place to focus on wash control, brush control and efficiency of shapes. So the, the way you control your brush, for example, if I want to paint this eye, instead of filling it in like that, I can just go with one swipe. Okay, just an example. Um, and, and even the thought of shape and space and a negative space and how that influences everything because you'll notice that the, the black border and the black side of the face on the right will define the shape. Okay, it, it actually is a major part of what defines the shape. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna zoom in just a bit because I want you to see it a little more from up close. Wasn't planning on, but I think it'll just be more fun. So you can actually see some more details. And when we're done with this, this the process itself, I'm gonna share with you a really cool artwork I worked on yesterday, the day before, uh, that I think you'll really enjoy. So let's do this uh, again. I'm going to work just with black. Um, not going to concern myself with colors whatsoever. Okay. This is why I didn't clean the palette because I don't care for a black color. I'm good. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to mix it. It's not going to be black. It's going to be gray. And by the way, sorry that the painting focuses and refocuses all the time. That's just because it's very light. Okay. So the camera is not sure what to focus on. Now look at the size of brush I'm using here. I'm using a very large brush uh, because I want to get this one easily. Uh, here we go. The light I told you about came out. Let me close those uh, blinds for just one second. It's not really uh, a sunny day, but um, you know, it just came out now. So it's, it's a hint that the painting process, it's a, a message that the painting process is going to be fun and well lit. That's how I'm going to treat it. 
Um, and by the way, Ruth like scrammed the moment I started the live stream. I don't know. That's that's she's so consistent. The moment I start talking, she's like, "Peace, I'm going." Um, okay, so you see, I'm still mixing. Now the reason I'm still mixing is this brush is very thirsty. It's full of liquids, and you think that that all of this time will produce something that's enough. It's not. Okay, we're we'll, we're gonna need more. Um, so just letting you know, usually the, the fatter the brush, the more, um, the more capa capacity it has, the, the more you'll need to mix sometimes because it's really misleading. Uh, now, if I would just do this for myself, and let me move this a bit so you can better see. If I would just do this for myself, the well is here. You, can, you can't see it, it's outside the frame here. Okay, it doesn't matter as much, this is more important. Uh, I would probably spend even more time mixing, but there is this aspect of me wanting to entertain you. So in theory, this painting should be done in one layer, by the way, one layer, just this. Now I'm going to do something I don't usually do. You see this tape giving me about a 20 degree angle? Away with that. I'm going to put this one, this thick thing here, that's going to give me more like a 30 degree angle because I want more movement because I need it, okay? Now, I'm going to interpret the scene in just two values. So here is the dark value. And here you have to think because again, I'm not going to be utilizing mid values at all. I'm just interpreting this as a black and white, which makes things easier. We don't have to focus on colors. We don't have to focus on values as much. But the only trick is we have to interpret what we see. Okay. We can add something to it later on if, if it'll go too fast because we're really like, we're there, you know. Um, so we'll see about that. But what you want to do is work simultaneously, left, right, left, right. And always have one of these ready so you can go like that, keep it wet for longer. And I don't know, let's kind of see what we get here. Keep this area wet, then go back and start working on this area. And the fact that I drew it never means that that's all I need. I actually need to continuously refer to my reference and always make sure to do that. Because even though you made a drawing, you still need to really see the nuances and, and see where everything is. And that's not always easy. Uh, now, do I want to switch over to a smaller brush? Let's do that for, for a while. Let's switch over to a bit of a smaller brush. Just so that I can get some of those finer details in. We have this beautiful angle like that, and that goes here, like that. And we have a couple of, of the f creases on the face. Now this is entirely in the, in the shadow too. So this is good. Now, here's where we have to be a little careful. Now remember, we have this edge. So let's re-wet it, wet it again. I'm gonna actually use my... <laughs> slightly smaller brush just to get a bit of a more accurate line here. And then I'm going to provide some more water and paint here to keep it wet. Okay, remember, we have both edges to take care of. So a bit more water even, a bit more paint, keep this left side wet for longer so that I can deal with this side. Okay, now we have to really observe this, switch over to the small one. And me describing the process also slows me down. So I'll do my best to still get even washes, but if I don't, you'll have to forgive me. Now, this to me seems all in the shadow, so let's do that. One more thing we can focus on, because we don't have to think about almost anything uh, other than the shapes, is the edges. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is use, use a third brush just to soften some edges up, like this should be soft, see? Uh, this should also be quite soft, like this. So it looks like I kind of uh, made it lighter, which I have uh, inevitably. But the idea here is not to make it lighter, but rather to soften that edge, okay? Now this isn't enough. It looks enough, but once uh, it starts to dry, it's gonna go back to perhaps being a, a hard edge. So we have to always stay conscious of that, okay? more uh, and you see how it slowly comes together and, and something nice is created. 
Now again, I'm alternating between my large brush, small brush, large brush, always. Um, this is a new shape, so I'm not going to open it up yet because I have limited resources and focus. So anytime you uh, run into a new shape, don't be quick to open it up and start painting there is my tip. Okay. Now for the beard, and this is what's going to create the illusion of details. You just put in a few of these hairs in the shadow and you're done. You're good. See, it already will start looking like a beard or a mustache. See, edges. Edges are very important. We have some softer edges here. And here is the, the roll of thicker edges, um, uh, thicker, of uh, sharper edges that will really show the texture of the beard. Okay. And here, don't forget about that left edge, almost dried on me. Okay. That's really important too. And that's how you slowly work your way down the painting and hopefully you produce something nice. Okay. Uh, I'm working on really focusing while painting, even though I'm streaming, even though I'm talking to you, uh, I'm trying to train myself to still be very focused on, to prioritize even the painting process. May came home and Ruth is now running to the, towards the door. Uh, I'm trying to, oops, the door's locked. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I'm going to continue. Uh, one sec. Okay. So I'm trying to prioritize uh, focusing on the painting first and not even, uh, not even to focus on, on necessarily entertaining or, or even talking. I am, I managed to do both to some extent, so that's good. Uh, but you see, so these, all of these small touches, what you want to do is make sure that you don't go a little overboard here. And yes, you want to convey that it's a mustache and what whatnot, but you also want to make sure that overall the shape works together. Okay. Because very often you get so much into the nitty gritty uh, that you forget that this has to work as a painting, uh, as, a, as a one painting actually. So here you could put in a bunch of details. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go like this. This is one shadow. You see, this is another shadow like that like this and then I can continue here like this um, around the beard. Okay. So now I'm kind of in a, in a good spot because I don't have to uh, worry as much about complex shapes. I'm done with most of the wash you see and, and you can probably already tell it's a face. You can see what you're looking at and I, hopefully it looks good. The one thing that you do want to pay attention to is notice this negative space here around the beard. We still need to take those small details into consideration. You can always come back with um, uh, opaque paint and get those back again. But why do that if you can get it done now? You know, why come, why have, have it, why, why would you want to have to come back uh, with opaque paint if you can get this shape very naturally with the paper white negatively? Um, so yeah. Uh, and if you're short on time, as promised, this is going to be a shorter process. Look, I'm, I keep forgetting about that left edge. Now, the reason I forget about it, honestly, is not just because I forget about it, but because it's less important. Uh, the background here is still going to stay quite smooth because it's dark. It's dark enough so that it won't create too much of a, of a background. But let me just throw some water at it to keep it wet for longer. Uh, this is the color of the shirt. So I'm going to keep that white and here, this is a detail I didn't notice. I didn't draw it. So you have to always look at the painting. Okay. I had to really, uh, look at it, see what I see there and then make sure I get it in. And one more thing I notice I didn't notice before. Um, this edge is smooth. Okay. And this edge on the left is also a little smooth. So I'm going to blend that right in like this, just to give it an overall bit of a fun little, I don't know, feeling of some uh, soft edges. Same here, kind of softening that. I don't need this little island there uh, just to improve the shape a bit like this. Hopefully it will all kind of blend together. Uh, but to be honest with you, this side is done. So let's move on to the left side get more, uh, more of this paint. It's going to be this, this, um, this kind of a painting is sort of like a sprint, as you can see here. Um, because we decided to interpret it in one layer, let's really put our best 
into this layer and make sure that it looks good. And ideally, I won't have to do anything past this layer. I could decide to do something, but I don't have to because it will look good. It will look good like a painting that can stand alone in its own right, you know. So this goes here. Look at the shadows. Look at, look at what's going on here. So this goes around here. This is fairly straight, straight line. Goes around here. There's a button I missed. So I'm going to go around that button that for some reason I didn't put there. And then I can even uh, kind of hint at it by doing this. I don't know if it turned out nicely or not, but that's fine. And remember, there's one area we still haven't done. And this is something that will often happen to me. I'll kind of start uh, light and then as I move down, I'll, I'll that, without even noticing, I'll start uh, darkening the wash. Uh, I don't know why, it's, uh, it's something I should probably work on because there was no reason to darken. I could have maintained that same value. And one thing I want to put in here is this side of the color is darker. Let's convey that. See, there is this change of direction. You can even soften the edge there. Something like this. Hopefully you can see well. That's that's not good. Let's go back and add some cleaner water here. Didn't clean my brush properly, so this is better. Something like this. There we go. Hope that makes sense. And the area we still haven't addressed. Very important. So here, next to the nose. Kind of like this. I look at the very center of it and this is what's going to define the shape of the nose for us. So very important like this and let's soften that edge. Let's tilt it like this. The reason I do that is because I don't want the water to run into the dark paint. So I tilt it the other way around. I hope that makes sense. If I tilt it down like this, the water is going to run into the paint. I don't want that. So I tilted it back here and it all moves there. This is a very important, um, another important tip I'll give you. Uh, remember, you can always play around with the page. You can move it around. You don't have to uh, always have it at an angle like this. Always have it a, like play around with it. I often will paint like this, like literally holding it. Let me show you with the front camera, literally holding it and painting because I need to see the details. I need to be careful and I need to have full control of the angle and the way it flows. Now we have another area we still haven't uh, gotten is the ear. So let's do that. A bit of a shadow here, a bit of a shadow there. A few details here and there, not much. There isn't much there. Uh, and I'm gonna blend it too because I don't want it to take too much attention. Like this, soften, maybe even soften this edge up. Um, and look at what we've got here. Let me switch over to the face camera. So, see, this is, this is it. It's just one layer, top to bottom, interpreted as light and dark. Don't worry about values. Don't worry about colors. Only worry about shapes, per, uh, composition, edges. Um, what else did I write here? The technique you use for the brush, like really getting things down efficiently, um, without overwork, without like, get those shapes in effectively, be effective because you need that speed. If anything, you, you want to save that time. You know, a lot of people are in a hurry, paint dries and all of that. So the, the one way to combat this is to improve your brush technique because faster brush technique means faster process, easier, uh, easier time because you saved some time. So you actually have more time to, um, to, I guess, be more careful in the areas that require it because you're not as much in a hurry. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Let's me switch, uh, let me switch over to the top camera and just look at what you are writing in the chat. We'll read some of the messages. Hopefully uh, things ran nicely. Um, oh, I will talk about the materials because I see some people ask about that. We will also dry it. I want to show you one last thing. Look at how, how much the paper buckled. See this? It really buckled on me. Uh, because it's super wet here. This is the easiest way to see. Now, once I'll dry it, a lot of people have been asking, will it dry? Will it flatten? Yes, it will flatten. In fact, we have some nice sunlight here. So let me just place it there uh, just for a few minutes uh, to see if I can maybe get it to dry faster. Okay, just place it in the sun. Actually, let me, I'll take a picture of it so you can see it in the sun. It looks really good, I think. Uh, let's do this. 
there is a cable in the way, but uh, yeah, I love how watercolor looks uh, in sunlight. It just looks so much better. Um, so that's weird. I want to airdrop it to my Mac. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to open it up uh, on screen just for fun. Um, this, this, this is the kind of things I need to become more efficient in, just bringing in files, looking at stuff, you know, stuff like that. But you, you get a good representation of it. The video didn't skew it too much because the, the colors are simple. So that's one good thing. So let me show you. Probably need to rotate it, as always. Uh, we will do that in just a moment. But just so that you can see how sunny and nice uh, it is and how nice it looks in direct sunlight. Uh, and then I'll go over the chat uh, and see what you're writing and address any questions you may have. But this is why I love these processes because you can just do so much so fast and and, and it's fun. You, you save up a lot of trouble for yourself. You don't have to do something that is extremely difficult, which is always good in watercolor. Again, this is why I say portraits are a little easier. So here it is, sunbathing. Uh, hopefully it will flatten. I find that drying a painting in the sun is better than using a hairdryer. To be honest with you, it just, it, it's more organic. It will flatten more evenly. With a hairdryer, some areas take longer and some areas are too, you've, you're too focused on with the heat. So it still is sometimes wobbly. Sunlight is best. The big advantage of painting plein air. You can just find a spot of light if you have it, put the painting there. It's really good. Uh, so let's see uh, what you're saying. Um, but indeed, a, a relatively uh, easier process, you know. Um, okay, so da, 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 da. let's see what you're saying on the process. Uh, Zaid Thakur, I found, uh, oh yeah, Sergei Kuznetsov on Insta. His name is Uragan Kuznetsov. Uh, and thought he was just another architect artist and then found your painting master's video on him. Yeah, I mean, the fact that I did a video on someone, uh, Zaid, it doesn't necessarily mean there's someone to um, look up to in a way. I mean, that's, it's my personal kind of um, taste. So don't feel like me saying that someone's good is that's, that's, that's the holy grail. But yeah, he's great. I love his work, uh, which is why I featured him, you know, yeah. Uh, but if you have tastes similar to mine, then yes, you will obviously enjoy um, the same kind of artists. Uh, by the way, I have an amazing, realistic watercolor painter to share with you soon. Some of you know her probably, Carol, Carol Evans, I believe. She's amazing, you'll see. Um, Donna Bullman, hello, Marjorie Johnson, looking for good pictures for Mono, found one of my cousin on Pinterest, would love to, of your cousin on Pinterest. Okay, uh, plurally on their Pinterest. Uh, would love to see what you would do with it. Uh, feel free to send it over. Let me know that you want me to try it out. I may, I don't know, but, but get, get, their, uh, get their consent uh, for it. <coughs> Shelley Pryor, fine art, good sunny morning. Liron from Southern Ontario near Toronto. Yeah, I've been to Ontario a few times. Been to the Niagara Falls. Um, Laura Mary, although I'm sure that Ontario is much more than just the Niagara Falls. That's like the super touristic thing to say. Now, uh, Laura Merrifield waving at Shelly. I'm originally from uh, Kitchener, now in California, USA. Cool. Um, Kusum Shabong Art. Hi from London. By the way, I saw your email too. Uh, I will uh, answer. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Richard, uh, thank you so much. Pence Palacio. Hi, Liron. Hey, how are you, my friend? Uh, Ian Jackson would have a go at this with Indian ink. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. As that would uh, do it in one layer and do the transition areas in watercolor. Cool. That's nice. That's fun. Uh, yeah, Indian ink is fun. I, I used it a couple of times in different mediums like pens and, and also like with a, with a thing you dip into. It's fun. It's really fun. Mark, is that an Isabay brush? No, it's all uh, been Escoda brushes aside from this one that you're probably referring to, which is a Leonard brush. Um, I use it in almost every live stream or at least every big painting. It's always uh, a requirement. Um, so yeah, this is size six mop. I love these mop brushes. Barbara Gemin, highly run. It's Barbara from Italy. Love your portraits. Learned masses from them. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pierre Schilling looks amazing already. Thank you. Uh, Pragya says Namaste from New Delhi. Finally made it to a live session. Monochromatic is always a huge hit with me. Cool. Uh, Marjorie Johnson, I didn't hear what paper. It is staying wet for a long time. Okay, yeah. So 
The paper stays wet for longer because I worked fast and uh, I used a lot of water and the angle. So it seems to stay wet for longer, but it's very relative. I see papers that stay wet for much, much longer. Uh, but here's what I will say. By the way, there are a few details to add. I will add them, a few creases and stuff like that. Um, the fact that we uh, turned it into black and white does not mean, let me bring back the original, does not mean we can't uh, add a few details in. So let me place the original here. Looks really good, I think. Uh, and go back to seeing your messages. Uh, so yeah, materials. Uh, the paper is Arsh, so that's standard. The paints are actually, uh, this is um, uh, Paul Rubin. The black is Paul Rubin, but I love uh, like a lot of brands. Um, Schmincke had a good black I use a lot. White Knight has a good black color I use a lot. Um, Daniel Smith, you can find a few good uh, black colors. So it doesn't really matter, especially for these types of works, you know. Um, it, it's not as important to get a perfect like br uh, br uh, brand here. I noticed a small mistake I made. The nose, uh, I kind of missed that dent inside. I kind of have it, kind of don't. So yeah, always things could be improved. Uh, so that's the paper, Arsh. Uh, 300 grams uh, uh, cold press, you can see the texture, palette, Paul Rubin, paints, Paul Rubin, brushes, I said Leonard for this one, Escoda for this one and that one, um, I have this Mijello uh, water bucket that I will very uh, dangerously hold up in front of the camera, here it is, let me show you here, I've been using this one for ages, uh, saw Steve Mitchell use it from the Mind of Watercolor and just bought it. Uh, and, and I've been using it. It's very nice because it has three uh, compartments. So let me show you. Can you see? Three compartments. So you can decide that one is for uh, clean brushes only. So for example, well, ones that haven't been dipped into paint. Uh, you can decide that another one is for warms and another one is for cools. Uh, so it's really useful to have the different compartments. I like that concept a lot. Um, what else? I have this lame, dirty paper towel here. Um, pencil, I use just a normal one, like regular number two, if I can even find it. This kind of a thing, like tiny, lame -o little <laughs> number two pencil, short. Uh, sometimes I use a mechanical one. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it. The tape, because a lot of people ask about the tape. You saw it, but it's this one. Let me show you the other one here. It says Fixer, I don't think you can find this brand, it's just a generic tape brand, but the idea is have a brand that you can rip easily like that. That means it's a good one. Um, it's one that won't, I suppose, stick too hard onto the paper. I'm gonna remove the tape too in a few moments and I will show you how I remove the tape more efficiently and make sure that I don't mess things up completely, okay? Uh, let's go back uh, and see what else we have here. Uh, looks amazing already. Thank you so much, Pierre. Uh, okay, we read this one, we read this one. Tony Bram, uh, Bramhan, Bramhan, sorry, <laughs> Haley Ron, thank you. MB, wow, that way, uh, that that's way too hard for me. It looks so beautiful. So uh, it can be a challenge, I won't lie, but the thing you have to remember here is that you don't have to worry about color at all. Okay, you're just using one color. Another thing you want to remember here is that you don't have to worry about values at all. You're just mixing one mixture. And if you wanna make things easier on yourself, take like a little china palette like this, put in paint straight out of the tube, put water, mix it together, and have this huge quantity of paint that you don't have to remix. You don't have to reach back to the palette. That's one great way to do this. I, I saw an artist do this in, in one of their demos because he paints huge, um, and it is useful. Uh, so you can even remove that aspect of mixing. But all you have to focus on is just, and you saw me, you have a lot of leeway. This part started to dry, but the moment water touched it, it kind of connected back together. All you have to think about is the shapes, okay? It is a good practice because you'll always have to be aware of shapes, even when using colors, even when using uh, different values, you still need to get the shapes right. So why not remove all of that, all of those distractions and do that? What you can do is choose a bit of a simpler portrait, perhaps with fewer details here on the mustache and all of that, something a little easier to do. Yes, that's definitely a possibility, okay? Um, so, so give it a try, trust me, it's not that difficult. You may mess up like an area that's tough, but you will get one other area to look really good, you know? 
Um, and that's a win for me. Like if one section of the painting looks good, I'm happy with it. Uh, and L Melch says, it's amazing. Thank you. Uh, Scars, my friend. Uh, wait, it skipped on me. The chat sometimes refreshes and then it jumps up. Uh, hi, Liron. Uh, good morning. <laughs> uh, Barbara, these monochrome portraits are so much easier than working out the colors. Yes, 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 exactly. Sandra Toscarini, thank you, uh, beautiful work. Thank you, Tarun Vaid, uh, uh, thank you so much. I saw your email too, I believe, or wait, uh, did you send me more stuff for, uh, for review? I don't remember. Uh, Domo Haleron, great to catch the stream, welcome aboard. Pes Palacio, hope Ruth's having a great time. Yeah, she just went on a walk. Limit Sizuka, amazing, thank you. Scars, 1951, how'd you do today? It's been a good day, it's been a few good days, really. Um, have been uh, limit Suzuka says thanks bye okay bye bye um, uh, it's been a few good days I've been eating well sleeping well got my energy back up uh, well Alessandro my friend how are you doing thank you for saying it's beautiful Elsa Grace I want to look uh, out the front window at Tel Aviv yeah I, I don't know if like the people next door can look into the studio they won't see too much uh, but other than that no other angles to look through Kusum says, easy to follow, thanks. And by the way, break my rules. Don't do an even wash. Stop, like work slowly. Work every section slowly, find out that some part dried and then like work in patches. I'm gonna do a video on that too. Don't, don't, don't be scared to do that. Put a bit of color here, a bit of color there. And yes, you will get some uneven transitions. As long as you have light and dark, you're good to go. It will look good. Yes, it looks better sometimes when it flows and when watercolor does the thing they do best, but you don't have to. You don't have to do it this way. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Timothy, no flurry, it just looks like the picture you did at fast. Yeah, it was fast. How long did it take? Like 15 minutes maybe, max. Um, but it's because I had a good drawing to begin with too. You have to remember that. I had a good, solid, accurate drawing. Uh, Luis Ribeiro, highly run, great video. Thanks. Thank you so, so much for being here, Luis. Renta Ivona, when it just finished, it looks fantastic, but the color sometimes changes after weeks or days because first it was wet and looked shiny. Any tips? Um, I don't know if weeks or days, it will change drastically after a few minutes of it drying, um, but if the color actually shifts, maybe you need to change, uh, change your brand, uh, move to something a little more, uh, I, I guess, improve the quality of the paints. That will be it. To me, I don't see a massive change for the professional artist grade paints I use. Um, so I don't know, it's probably a brand issue. For the lesser brands, I did experience it too. Um, it will definitely look much better when it's shiny and it's still uh, wet. That's just, just how it is uh, with watercolor. Uh, Timothy says, uh, gives us a thumbs up. Ira Umanis, great job. What a gift uh, to have in those hands. Thanks for sharing it. Thank you. It's actually not even the hands, it's the brain, it's the practice, but thank you so much. Lily E, Liron, it's, it is always so nice to see your videos. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Much, much appreciated. Pence Palacio, I could have uh, painted along with you, but I was painting another illustration. I, oh, cool, and I. Curious to see it. Your eyes are really nice. Probably catch up uh, for the next one. Yeah, sure. Uh, Ian Jackson, Leron, did you get my link to artist uh, Peter Jarvis? Um, did you send me an email? I'm not sure I've seen it, but uh, let me check. I'll check I, because the, the name does ring a bell. So I do think uh, I've seen it. Oh, you know what? I think I have seen it. Did I uh, not respond? Let's see. Wait, uh, artist. I'm going to look it up really quick because uh, I do remember the name. So I'm sure I've seen it. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I th oh, I think I've seen his work, but I don't remember your... Is it a message or email? I'll, I'll, I'll look back. Um, do you want me to feature, uh, feature him in the Painting Masters? I will. Really nice works. I'll leave this tab open and I'll remember to add him. Uh, definitely. Looks good. Javi Jav, great work. Uh, great job, Liron. Greetings from Chicago. Uh, Duke Nguyen. Hi, I'm here. Welcome aboard. Uh, Ria Kirkbride. Uh, I specialized in portrait and I love your approach. Learned so much about edge control. Thank you. Thank you so much. And here's the thing. Once you reach a point, take care of your edges and then continue to the next one. Take care of your edges, continue to the next one. That's, that's how it's done. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, and I will say one more thing. Let's say you got this hard edge here and you want to soften it. Don't beat yourself up and, and think that you have to get everything in one layer. It's okay to go over it, get some uneven edges, that's fine. 
go put put like a mid value here soften it and then let it dry and yes you will see some of these overlaps because it's transparent and you didn't get an even edge and even wash that's fine you don't have to work with uh, smooth washes that's that's just practicing a very high level of getting everything right in the in the right place and still maintaining that smooth transition you don't have to um, and practice simpler shapes first this is not the easiest one yes i will admit but it is much easier than you think um thank you so much ria pence palacio i use white knights neutral black and it's so rich yeah that's a great one white knights is my go-to palette yeah, they're so good and cheap uh, i mean maybe in the u.s they're more expensive in europe and, and here it's, they're very cheap scars good work it's a fantastic likeness thank you you get it wrong yeah i just traced it so uh, it doesn't doesn't reflect on my drawing skills. Pence Palacio, what are your suggestions for a limited color palette? Do you have any list of colors in mind? Yeah, I actually can give you right off the top of my head three that I like a lot. Uh, and I use them for a painting I'll show you in a moment. And illustration. So I love the combination of uh, French Ultramarine or Ultramarine. I'm not smart enough to know the difference. Perlin Red. Yep, Perlin Red and Yellow Ochre. These three together, they look so good. Now you can supercharge it with a bit of cerulean or phthalo blue if you need some more some stronger blue and a little bit of pyrrole scarlet for the red instead of perlin though perlin is pretty nice and that's it you got yourself a nice limited palette that's all you really need you can switch uh, the perlin for kind of a magenta or quinacridone will still look great but that's my go-to something like in the realm of this one of perlin so it could be pyrrole it could be perlin in the realm of French Ultramarine, I love, and Yellow Ochre, one of my favorite yellows ever. I love these because they're very natural. I could have created this with these three. I could have mixed a kind of a gray with them, and then you'll have touches of yellow, touches of red, because you can't get it perfect, of course. Um, so, yes. Um, da -da -da -da. Zaid. Hey, Liron, will you say that Sergei Kuznetsov and Alvaro Kastanay have similar styles? Yes, and uh, there is a reason behind that, actually. I believe I've seen a few pictures of them together. They met. Um, <coughs> it's funny, but Sergei Kuznetsov is a very successful person based on what I know. He's like the chief architect of Moscow, which is insane. So very successful in his architectural career. Um, but in, in the watercolor realm, I believe he actually learned a lot from Alvaro. Uh, I believe they have met for a reason, they're probably friends, and they actually met uh, because uh, they wanted to learn from one another. So I'm, I'm sure that Sergei learned something from Alvaro and vice versa. Um, you see that a lot in the approach to light and shadow, in the, in the um, colors they use, specific colors, a lot of yellow ochre, and, and um, is it cerulean or a different blue? I don't, I'm not sure, but it's like this um, cobalt, cobalt blue. A lot of uh, yellow ochre and cobalt blue. Um, it's kind of those same mixes. I love these. I'm using a lot of these too, uh, and I, I, I really enjoy them. Uh, but still, yes, there is a lot of similarity. You're not imagining things. Um, Scars, I really love your vids. Very valuable, informative, illustrative. I'm learning so much from you. Thanks. Thank you. And hopefully for anyone who's like the, the live streamers are too talkative and all of that, this was like a quick bam, like a quick demo to enjoy. Um, well, feel that the first wash is always the best one because it looks beautiful in its simplicity. I also feel that from the point I'm just going to make it worse. Yeah, I get that feeling. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You need to really collect all of your courage and go for the second wash. You're being scared to mess it up and all of that. Uh, Don Opliger, I like. I really like how fast you work. Yeah, watercolor can be really fast. I learned in the in the fields outside in plan era to work fast. Roland says, "Yo, hey, my friend, how are you?" Jade Moonchild, you're on. Hi. Hi. How are you? I believe I've seen, um, was it comments or emails? I believe you sent me an email. I also will see it if I missed it. Marjorie Johnson, I think Mission Gold paints have a lot of brightness in them. Might help with achieving more of a wet look. Could be. I haven't tried them. I should. Kelvin Zero, whenever I draw or paint portrait, they always look like they belong <laughs> in Hellraiser. Yeah, it's, it's all about that accuracy I was talking about earlier. Get things relatively accurate with your little shapes and your edges and that's it. And in order to do that, make the process easier on yourself. Don't use many colors, don't use many values, just this kind of a thing. Now, with that in mind, let's move on to the next uh, stage of adding a few details. Now, it's going to be very few details, not much at all. So I'm just going to mix some paint here. Now, let me show you. And this, this will hopefully improve it. So what I am missing is 
a bit of definition because it's not actually a beard as you can see it's more of a um, what do you call that thing here I forgot French beard I don't know I think French beard so if I'll just put in a bit of that here it kind of helps to show that okay now from the lip there is quite a lot of hairs like stray hairs I can actually use my thinner brush for this thing I'll show you thin hairs in the beard and mustache uh, that can help just to add a few more details there add a bit more make sure this isn't empty okay you don't have to Ruth is back she always likes to be petted once she comes back and then she's like bye bye you're still streaming I don't want to be here so um, you see here just a few touches of hairs here and there just to fill in that area okay don't go crazy don't fill it up there's no need to just a bit near the edges is another good place you see like that um, around the larger shapes like here and I think that's enough now another area I recognize that just calls for it is the eyes there are a few creases uh, in the skin that you want to get not too many like it's not too much but this you see that's that's already enough uh, a bit next to the eyebrow because again it's not an, an even edge see and just adding this bit will greatly help see these small lines here uh, a bit of it here as well to maybe make the smile a little stronger um, that's pretty much it I think not much you see not much now you can go and darken some stuff my approach to this is always dark very sparingly so just choose a small section and maybe darken that or you don't have to um, I consider maybe making the pupil darker but I actually really like it so maybe I won't maybe I'll keep it I think I'll keep it like this um, let me know your opinion but I think I will keep it like this uh, did I miss anything else interesting you could add oopsie, oopsie. you could add a few more of uh, perhaps here just a bit just a hint to, to show that there's a mustache here you see just a bit of that you don't need much you really don't and this is kind of proof the thing that makes the painting is not and by the way I like how the smile became stronger with that now the thing that makes the painting is not the small details but rather the big shapes I could have not done any of these and it will still look good it's just to supercharge it uh, a bit uh, so yeah it's it's all about that of the painting I missed this small shadow here too that was actually very important to me I saw it earlier as well said I'll do it and forgot make it thinner down here thinner up there yeah so that's much better a bit more definition to the neck um, and yeah I, I believe this is done I don't want to do anything to it so let's see what you're saying your opinions I think it actually improved it more than I expected uh, so yeah um, da -da -da -da. okay Zaid, would you consider Nitin Singh as uh, impressionistic? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what he does. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. The, uh, the impressionism style is very wide, in my opinion. It probably, it's probably narrower than I believe it to be. I probably call a lot of things that aren't impressionistic, uh, but I, I believe he is. Elaine, you just start my water. Uh, water class watercolor class and I got all frustrated as I've been a control freak all my life yeah did you check out the frustration free watercolor course because that's gonna help uh, hint hint if you if you want to improve your watercolors check out the course uh, is it fine if I link your critique as a review for my work if I link your critique as a review for my work uh, what do you mean by that I think if you link to anything that's fine that's cool I think well, let me know what you mean by that uh, if I link review for my work oh okay I see so uh, do you need to provide some kind of a review for your works uh, let me know but feel free to link to the video no problem principal asked you there are new things that I've learned from you in the past few streams one would be how to how you mix violets with black to have a deep tone yeah that's that's a fun one uh, I love yellows too with grays and black colors that's really nice uh, cold deep Bood, uh, says I'm Indian <laughs> welcome aboard um, goatee yes it's a goatee I forgot <laughs> yes 
And this is kind of a twist on a goatee because there is more beard here. It's like a ch cheekless beard. But yeah, goatee, that's the, the one I missed. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. Uh, yeah, I for, forgot the word exists even. Uh, welcome aboard, Cool Deep. I'm uh, happy to have you here. Uh, Linda Viotti, and thank you, Ian, for letting me know. Thank you, Mark, for letting me know. Um, yeah, so in any case, if you have any questions, let me know. We're, we're pretty much uh, done with the demo. I do want to show you one more thing. Um, and I did intend on keeping this live stream a little shorter than usual because I have a bunch of stuff to do. Ruth needs to get a, a little dog vaccine today. Um, so let me show you something. I'm going to bring it over. Um, it's an illustration I did and I put a lot of effort in it and some of you have seen it already. So, you know, I like drawing and painting Pokemon. <laughs> this is... Um, so they posted, uh, I, I don't know if I should show it, but whatever. They posted a competition on a forum of Pokemon collectors, uh, art competition, and I signed up for it. And this is what I did. So here we go. And I can also share a high quality picture. Uh, but this was something I worked really, really hard on. Now, if you're familiar with Pokemon, which I don't expect you to be, it's basically my take on uh, an existing artwork, obviously. Um, so this is an, an artwork from 1996 and I added the sky, changed them a lot and also changed the colors of the Pokemon. I, I can explain why later, but uh, I did change quite a lot of things here and it's kind of my take on it. And there's a lot of details here and I'm fairly happy with this one. So yeah, the artist, original artist is called Ken Sugimori, who is the creator of Pokemon basically. Uh, so I thought it would be cool to show you. Let's put these side by side just for fun like that. Um, and let me answer any questions you may have. Carter Vincent, uh, I'm going to need to, uh, if you keep spamming, I'm going to need to uh, put you in timeout. Uh, just because I can't see the chat if there is spam. So sorry about that. Uh, but if you continue doing that, and you're continuing. So first in Japanese, which I can kind of read the ru, and then in Arabic, I'm going to have to put you in timeout. Mate, so you're uh, going to be put in timeout for a while. Sorry about that. Um, Zayt Takur, I started doing charcoal work in order to study from Sergei Kuznetsov and Alvaro Kestanay. Is it a waste of time? If not, any tips to look out for? Uh, actually, it's a great idea. I would, I would encourage it for sure. That's, a, that's like charcoal is good because it kind of, it doesn't behave obviously like watercolor, but it has a lot of freedom in terms of its fun creating shapes with it. I would definitely uh, try something like this. And I see great value in, uh, let me make the reference photo smaller. I see great value in uh, doing a study of a different artist's uh, artwork, but using a different medium. Kind of like I did the pen sketches for paintings. I think it's really smart. Um, and charcoal or graphite or just pencil, it's really good. Definitely do that. If, if you feel like it familiarizes you, here's where I think it will help. I think it will help with better understanding their compositional choices, their... Um, the arrangement of elements, how they, how they arrange their details in different locations. Um, like for example, even with this one, look at the balance. So you have a lot of details here, but here it's a little cleaner or, or the left side, especially you get this nice balance. And I haven't even, I didn't need to change anything. The reference photo came perfect right out the gate. It was larger and I cropped the face only, but I didn't need to change anything uh, aside from that. So, um, not always will you have to, but you will learn a lot about the balance and composition by doing those uh, studies. So yeah, uh, definitely recommend it. Stationary obsession, obsessive smile, stationary obsessive smile sends a heart. Thank you so much. Uh, Rhea Kirkbride, I'm definitely uh, doing some portrait studies like this today. Cool. Uh, if I gave you any motivation, go with it, roll with it, do it. Uh, you won't regret it. It's fun. Uh, this is an easygoing type of a portrait. Uh, you really will enjoy it, I believe. So yeah, definitely give it a try if you feel like you've got the energy to it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, da -da -da -da. I'm cleaning while I watch right now when I sit down, I'm doing this. Yeah, definitely. Kelvin Zero, very uh, Kensugi Mori, yep. Uh, Domo says, holy crap, that's awesome. Are you referring to this one or this one? Let me know. Uh, Linda Viotti, very nice. Well says, nice. Whoa, this, uh, that's great, boss. Thank you, Scars. Uh, is it watercolor? Yes, Linda, it is watercolor. Uh, let me show it to you again. Uh, actually, let me open up a, a picture of it. You'll see it in a much better quality. Um, so I can share with you a picture of it. 
uh, save. All I have to go, all I have to do is go to my uh, Pokemon uh, painting folder uh, and I'll share it with you. A picture, you'll see it in full quality. It, it looks so much better. Like I really like how it looks like in the picture. Just a second. And it's way more saturated than you think. That's the thing. It always, the, the camera always kills the colors. So here's what I look at at the moment so you can better see the details. I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, so here we go. This is what I'm looking at currently. Much much uh, more uh, good looking, I think. Um, so yeah, it's watercolor. All of this is watercolor. The the line art is watercolor as well. All the lines you see are just water, just black watercolor, uh, which was really fun to do. Very challenging as well. Um, Pence Palacio, I forgot the name of the dragon, but I can remember it was the evolution of uh, Bagon. Oh yeah, this is actually Charizard, but the evolution of Bagon is uh, Salamence. You have Bagon, Shelgon, and then Salamence. Such a nerd I am. Marjorie Johnson, Thursday is my grocery delivery day. Uh, oh yeah, I remember that, Marjorie. Try to pay attention to both. Gets more difficult every year to do two things at once. Uh, is it like a big hassle, the, the uh, delivery? Don't they just get it and, and go? Um, let me know. Uh, Ria Kirkbride, oh wow, I love your illustration, I love manga, and I love seeing you do such different styles. Yeah, the old style of Pokemon is really uh, more manga-like. Well, it's still manga and anime today, but that's, that's much more like it. Uh, the style of your competition piece is so different. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's really different, and I've been doing a lot of these uh, recently. It's really, really different. Actually, I did another one that I can't share with you yet, because it is, I haven't shared it back in the, on the forum, so I can't share it yet. It's a huge surprise. If you stay tuned, you will see it. It's um, it's a childlike style uh, drawing I did. You have you've never seen anything like it by me before, so that's fun. Um, so yeah. Oh no, okay, you're talking about the Pokemon one. Yeah, no, I worked. Uh, so this paint, the portrait, you saw how long it took. It was very quick. The Pokemon painting took a few good hours, easy. Um. Linda Vietti, wow, I love the smoothness you have obtained, thank you. Shuran GB Pande, which paper are you using? Both of these are Arsh, Arsh paper. Uh, one of the best watercolor papers out there. However, I am a big fan of Saunders Waterford. Uh, probably bigger than Arsh, but what can you do? They don't bring it uh, here anymore, so I have to settle for Arsh. Don Oplier, with all the darks, where would you put your signature? Uh, I'll use uh, white paint out of the tube or a white gel pen. That's a great question. That's, it's a good one. All I have to do, and let me move this aside for a second. Sorry if you're still looking at it. I'll just sign it with white here. I can do this. I'll do this in a moment. Okay? And you will see. Yep, it is a pro. And by the way, I can go darker than this. This is still fairly light. Yes, it's a shiny Charizard, Calvin. Exactly, you got my point. Yes, so I took an artwork that had originally just the, the these normal Pokemon. It was even probably before they invented shiny Pokemon. It was 96. I don't think they had shiny Pokemon back then. Uh, and I turned them shiny. I was like, what if they were shiny? Um, so just a second. Uh, where was I? Yeah, well, can you repeat your limited palette in specific? the paint brand. Yes, sure, sure. I'll show you. Uh, uh, well, okay, so here is my choice for a limited palette. It is Peril in Red by Daniel Smith, and I can actually show you the tube. Um, if I still have it, I still have it, right? Is that Peril in Red? I believe it is. Wait a second, I'm gonna need a third hand. Yeah, okay, so this is Peril in Red. And it's this color here. In terms of pigment, you can go online and check, but the pigment here is, um, where is it written? I keep forgetting. Yeah, PR178. Yeah, PR178, pigment uh, red 178. So that's the peril in red, that's for the red. Then yellow ochre is M gram, which I can also, uh, find for you. So let's see here. Here's my M gram palette. And not palette, but rather set that was sent to me by uh, a great subscriber. Um, yeah, so it's this yellow ochre, which is essentially 
pigment yellow 43 that's yellow ochre single single pigment yellow ochre I should use the permanent alizarin crimson more once I run out of the peril in red. Um, next up, we have French ultramarine, which I have already prepared it out. So French ultramarine by Daniel Smith, which is this one right here. Look how dark it can get. That's a plus. You can see it, um, which is uh, 29, I believe, PB 29. Yeah, pigment blue 29, it's French ultramarine. And lastly... Um, or no, this is it. This is it. Yes, I sometimes spice it up with some pyrrol scarlet or I'll switch to quinacridone rose, which is PV19, I believe, pigment violet 19. Um, but these are the main ones. I don't use any more colors for a limited palette. This was done with these three colors, by the way. Um, this, everything you see here, every color you see here was produced with these three colors plus one more phthalo blue, okay? Which I forgot the pigment for, but I did use it. So phthalo blue, you can see it here, just whatever is left of it. Uh, if you wonder, the Pidgeot I did uh, with French Ultramarine, the sky is a phthalo blue, okay? Uh, all of the blues in the characters almost are French Ultramarine, but the, the jeans here are also phthalo blue, and this one is phthalo blue. Uh, this is a really nice color. Let me bring back the original one, just so you can better see. Sparks, I love phthalo blue. Um, so yeah, hopefully that is uh, helpful well. Linda Viotti and gr Gradual Radiance. Uh, indeed, Zaitakor, do you have a uh, do you have a list of step one can go to uh, to go more realistic and personalistic from painting to painting rather than going all in and upsetting your followers? Um, a list of steps one can do. Uh, to go more realistic and personalistic from painting to painting. <laughs> uh, I would just do whatever you want. If you want to go full-blown realistic, just do it. Uh, don't worry about what people say. And that's something I, I've been hearing a lot lately and I believe, I'm a, I'm a great believer of it. Create content or paintings or whatever it is for the type of audience you want to have, not for the one you already have. And that's how you keep building things that both satisfy you and are fun for you and also... Uh, resonate with people. You will find audience for everything. All you have to do is really make the content. Now, uh, let me make myself a little bigger here. There I go. Uh, yeah, just do whatever you want. Now, if you are asking generally for how to turn from realistic to impressionistic, uh, from impressionistic to realistic, focus more on the values, get the values very accurately, and get the shapes accurately. Those are the two things. The colors aren't as important for realism necessarily, but the values and the, the big shapes are very important, okay? Um, Kelvin Zero, Shiny Charizard, Shiny Pidgeot, exactly. 2610, hi, I'm new here. YouTube recommended me here. Welcome aboard, thank you so much. I get... Uh, quite a few messages and, 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 you know, updates from people that found me uh, thanks to the live stream. So thank you so much being uh, here. Uh, welcome aboard. Happy to have you. I have a lot of painting tutorials, stuff like that. Uh, check out the channel. I think you'll find a lot of things you enjoy. Uh, Timothy Knopfler, uh, I hope to see you painting these Pokemon paintings. Yeah, I'll, I'll do something in the future. I actually have a video showing that, I believe. I have one video showing that. Tell me zero. The only Pokemon painting I ever done is Dancing Curly on my Avatar Shiny Mega Gardevoir. Yeah, I love that. The Gardevoir line. Or the Routes line, if you will. Uh, scars. What is a good brand of white gel pen? Can't find a good one. Signo. It's S-I-G-N-O. That's the one that worked for me. Uh, Pence Palacio. Liron. Do you think I should sign my paintings or should I put my signature through Photoshop for digital uploads? Uh, the one that I've sent were Photoshop and I don't want to sign mine with ink. Um, if you don't want to sign yours, do it digitally. I love when the original piece, this actual thing, I know you can barely see it, but I like when this is signed. I don't see a problem with digitally signing it, uh, but I think it's better to have the signature on it as, a, as an inherent part of it. Um, a lot of artists, like mainly old-fashioned artists, will tell you the signature is almost as important as the painting. I don't know if it's that true, but yes, I think it's an inherent part of it. Marjorie. They bring in groceries and I need to repackage uh, and freeze. Oh, okay, okay. So the whole, yeah, the whole dealing with that. Definitely, I get it. Um, same here. <laughs> Sandra Toscarini, I'd like to see more portraits by you. Yeah, I, I will do more of these. Uh, well, thank you so, so much, Roger. You're so kind. You got it. 
I'm happy to help in any way. Kelvin, never really understand the difference between Ultramarine and French. Oh, check out Tio's video, I have no idea too. I think all Ultramarines are technically French Ultramarines since PB21 was invented by French. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Scars, I love Quinacridone Magenta and Quinacridone Gold. Yeah, these are beautiful. They work well together too, I love that. Uh, Lorenzo M, uh, wow, how uh, is your black so dark? Did you mix it? Yeah, this is actually not black, so here's the kicker. Uh, let me show you. Okay, let me get rid of this. And for anyone who says that they use pure black to mix their black colors, this plot twist is not black. It is not black. None of these outlines are black. It's French ultramarine, peril in red, and yellow ochre. Yes. Do you want me to show you live how I mix this black from these colors? Well, let me show you. Because I know a lot of people uh, have this, this belief that you can't. Very simple, especially for thin lines like I've just shown you. All you have to do, I'm going to do this spontaneously because we finished the, the, the main painting very fast. French ultramarine, barely any water, barely any water. Okay, just the paint. Look at already how dark it can get, okay? Now, add a bit of perlin red to it. And look at what you got here. Now add a bit of yellow ochre to balance it out. And then you keep adding a bit more of all of these three. Well, look at what you got here. Is that not dark enough? And for a line work, is that not dark enough? That's, that's it, that's the whole thing. And you can add a bit more blue to make it blue in some spots and add a bit more red to make it some more red in some spot. Even yellow to make it more yellow in some spots. But that's the gist of it. You can produce as dark of a color as you want from these three primaries. Okay, that's the magic, that's the... The magic trick. That's how I do all of the outlines for these. Now let me show you once again. And I can even uh, enlarge this. None of this. Even the Charizard. Uh, let me show you. Uh, right here. That, the gray. It's all of these three primaries. It's the same gray as here. Just lighter. Okay? I can show you. A bit of water. Same gray. Wait. Oh, you can't see. Sorry. Same gray. See? It's exactly the same. I know the quality isn't the best, but it's the same. All of the blacks, all of the grays that you see here are all mixed from my primary colors. That's the magic. Let me make this smaller, set it aside, see what else we're saying in the chat, and we'll, we'll soon move to uh, closer towards wrapping it up. Um, great painting, thank you so much, Lorenzo. Uh, Bunda Fatima, uh, it looks like it's loading, but it's just a picture, funny. Bean, wasn't it PR178 that is no longer getting produced, or was it? Um, I don't think, apparently uh, red is good. I think it was vermilion, uh, or maybe a different pigment, or, or you know, cadmium, of course, but this isn't uh, any of these. Zaitakor, if you were the, uh, the treasure or principal of an art school only for watercolor, what elements of painting Example, values, colors, design, would you allocate to uh, a painting master semester by semester be taught? Um, I would start with drawing first, drawing. Then I would probably go for values. Then I'll probably go for understanding the technique of painting, like the washes and all of that, and then color, I think. Uh, design will come first to drawing, design, composition, values in terms of understanding, then values uh, in terms of actually performing it with pencil or chalk or charcoal, or whatever. Then values with color and the technique of color and then ultimately colors. Um, I hope that makes sense. You, you hit on the main ones. Yeah, that's definitely that. Um, I would also do plein air. I would do plein air for sure. Scars, drawing first, then values, then color. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, that's the answer. Don Oplier, did you uh, use any masking on the pokey <laughs> painting? Uh, no, no masking. I was actually very lucky with the background wash. Let me show you. Um, so I finished the, the you know, red and, and blue. Is this blue or, or, or green? I never remember. I think it's green. Green and reds and, and PG and Charizard. PG out and Charizard. Then I added a background. Now, how did I add a background? I put in water and... and I pre-wet around everything you see here. It was a nightmare, a complete nightmare. And you see, I didn't do a perfect job. You see some gaps, but it was a complete nightmare. I really quickly painted around them. Then I put in uh, the blues while I was mid-wetting the paper. And then I pulled it more and I continued wetting and then I did wet and wet. 
uh, for this section. So top to bottom, it was a nightmare. I should have gone like this, because then at least I have the narrow and tall element going for me, but I went like this. It was a total nightmare and I got totally lucky with it. And the fact that I didn't mess it up and it actually looks good like clouds is, is just pure luck. I mean, it is skill, but it, it, it's luck in this example. So wait a second, I, I wanna check out a message that I got. One sec, sorry about that. And I'm gonna answer some more uh, messages real soon. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so, oh, it's actually not good, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll answer later. Um, da -da -da -da. So no masking tape, <sighs> going for realistic to tight or more impressionistic without upsetting. Oh, so the other way around. Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. Planner will help. Doing planner will help. Um, taking a few steps back, focusing on the large shapes and not the detail is a big part of impressionism as opposed to realism. You simplify more. Uh, send me an email, Zaid. I'll try and answer a more in-depth um, in depth answer there. And write, write detail. And I'll, I'll try to give a detailed proper answer. Money be your awesome, Leron. Keep, uh, keeping it real and being awesome. Your awesome self. Thank you. John, hi, Leron. I'm back. Well, awesome Pokemon painting. Thank you. Now, uh, mess guy, sorry, the message was retracted. Kelvin Zero, for me, I just mix a dark purple or dark blue is black. Um, and here's a tip for you, Kelvin. Add yellow and it neutralizes the purple. That's a quick way of creating a, a black or a gray. You just put purple, which is very dark naturally in many pigments, and then you add yellow. Neutralizes, turns into gray. French ultramarine and, and uh, burnt sienna, same concept. Um, love a spontaneous demo. Well, you can say it's black, yeah. Uh, try burnt umber plus salt for marine, same, same. Pence Palacio, sorry, Liron, but I felt sorry for yellow ochre as bad as you dip it directly, still having those paints in your brush. Yeah, but, but trust me, it's easy to get a, a, a um, clean, um, saturated yellow. I just go a few times over it and it cleans up, no problems. Marjorie, I wonder, the Pokemon painting done in your, uh, in your more impressionistic style, only a section of it. Yeah, like the, the background. Is a little more impressionistic. But the Pokemon themselves are very illustrative. I worked section by section. Uh, well, by the way, I recommend you to buy Liron's online course. Thank you so much uh, for recommending it to others. It's very good, well-structured, and it's also cheap. P.S. Liron, you will pay me for later for this ad. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so anyway, I think we can wrap it up now. I have a lot of things to do. Uh, I have to cook some stuff. Ruth, vaccine, vaccine, a bit more work. Let's remove the tape and sign this real quick. First sign. Um, I don't know if I want to go for white for the signature. Let's do that. Let's do it like, uh, no, 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 no. Let's go for dark. So you said, how will I sign with all the dark? I'm just going to sign it. Should we do like a red signature, like Alvaro Castanet and all of those? Now let's, let's just go super dark. Okay. Same dark I just mixed. I'm going to use for the signature, French ultramarine, Perlin red, yellow ochre, all of these three together will produce a dark that is dark enough for us to sign and will still be visible over this fairly light layer. It looks dark, it's not dark, trust me. So let's do this real quick. Liron, my thick brush, it's way too thick. That's fine. Neon. Con. Ski. What a name, huh? What a last name. Okay, and now let's remove uh, the tape together. Best moment, cannot disappoint you. I have to show it. So we'll get started here. I'm gonna try to keep the painting steady as I do it. That's the left side. And you see, it's a, it was a fairly simple process. Again, not much to it. Just get those shapes accurately. Don't be nervous. Don't be stressed to work super fast. Work as quickly as you can, but don't worry. Uh, if you have to slow down, slow down, that's fine. The whole idea with watercolor is to work as fast as necessary, but not faster than that, okay? And end result. Very fun. Had a good time painting this one for you. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it, <laughs> as always. Thank you so much to anyone who's here. That's like, it's the best. You make whatever I do uh, possible. Oh, wait, see, there's so many more. Messages that just got updated, I think, or maybe I'm imagining. 
Uh, joined. Oh, okay, Dave just joined late. Uh, uh, da -da -da I hope to fully catch up later. Good uh, to see everyone. Hi, Zaid. Uh, Money is right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Zaid Thakur. Hey, just out of uh, the blue. Check out Matt Schiffler Red Delta Project for diet and health. Interesting. I love Thomas the Lauer. A very underrated, yes, best kept secret of you too. I'll check it out. Matt, uh, I'll, I'll copy and paste it now. Um, I love Thomas the Lauer for keto stuff. He's very good on that and he's very open-minded too. So he's not like dogmatic on keto. Um, uh, Coven Zero now. I don't really like black, so I intentionally mix it into... Oh, okay, okay, I see, yeah. That's good. Uh, thank you for your time. Blessings. Thank you. Hey, David, how are you? Uh, either one, thanks for the birthday wishes. Yeah, you got it. I saw your message too. I'm sorry, I, I'm slow to answer to everyone, um, even on WhatsApp, so my apologies about that, but it was my pleasure, really. Um, you deserve it, and I hope the portrait will especially give you a lot of uh, future inspiration, because I know you like that kind of a thing, portraits, um, whether it's drawing or watercolor still. Uh, Don Opliger, yes, I really, uh, I really like your online classes. Thank you so much. Uh, looks like a great painting, Liron. Uh, you can go back and it's like 15 minutes or so. It's a quick process, so check it out. Don't worry, your surname sounds more polished than mine and I'm polished too. Yeah, I get that a lot. It's actually Romanian. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people say it sounds polished. Uh, but in case, thank you so, so much for being here. Uh, I will see you again soon on Saturday. There's going to be a new um, um, lesson of the How to Simplify course. We're almost done, like a third of the course left, and then we'll be back to two um, new videos uh, a week. So again, 